Week 9 NFL recap, please leave a like and let's get into it. Thursday night, Eagles at Texans. Houston jumped out to a 7-0 lead on a Teagan Quatoriano two-yard touchdown. After a couple of Philly touchdowns by Kenneth Walker and Miles Sanders, Davis Mills found Chris Moore for a 13-yard touchdown, tying the game up at 14. A.J. Brown continued his dominant season with a 17-yard touchdown, giving the Eagles a 7-point lead. A Kaimi Fairbairn 30-yard field goal was the last time the Texans would score and made it a 4-point game. In the early 4th, Jalen Hurts found Dallas Goddard for a 4-yard touchdown, making it 20 29-17. The Eagles remain undefeated and the Texans are 1-6-1. Chargers at Falcons. Atlanta got out to a 10-0 lead on a Cordero Patterson one-yard touchdown and Youngway Koo 29-yard field goal. Then it was Austin Eckler scoring two touchdowns, including a receiving touchdown, giving the Chargers a four-point advantage before halftime. Patterson scored his second touchdown of the day for the Falcons, giving them a three-point lead at the end of the third quarter. Then one of the craziest plays of the year happened where it looked like Austin Eckler scored a touchdown rolling over a defender, but a challenge and a replay did show that his elbow hit the ground and the Chargers had to settle for three. After a Falcons three and out, the Chargers got the ball back, and after a Josh Palmer 22-yard catch, the Chargers were in field goal range. Cameron Dicker hit a game winner as time expired to give the Chargers a three-point victory. Dolphins at Bears, a high-scoring game that was actually pretty fun. Raheem Mostert scored the first touchdown, putting the Dolphins up 7-3. to three. Before halftime, Justin Fields, who had a great day, found Darnell Mooney for a 16-yard touchdown, giving the Bears a four-point lead at halftime. But in the early third, the Dolphins responded with an 18-yard Jalen Waddle touchdown. But right after that, Justin Fields had a 61-yard rushing touchdown, putting the Bears down by three. Then it was the newly acquired Jeff Wilson Jr. catching a 10-yard touchdown to put the Dolphins up by 10. Fields found Cole Komet for a 4-yard touchdown, making it a 3-point game, but those were the last points scored in the game. Miami probably should have won by more considering they had a few 4th down misses in the 4th quarter, but if you're a Bears fan, you have to be encouraged by this performance. Panthers at Bengals. A rough day for Carolina and anybody that faced Joe Mixon in fantasy football. The Bengals got out to a 35-0 lead at halftime, and that included four Joe Mixon touchdowns. Baker Mayfield replaced P.J. Walker at halftime, and he had some decent garbage time numbers. Mayfield found Tommy Tremble to make it a 7-35 game, but Joe Mixon scored his fifth and final touchdown on a 14-yard run, making it 42-7. Mayfield found Terrace Marshall to make it 14-42, and Raheem Blackshear had a two-yard touchdown, making the final score 42-21. The Bengals are a confusing team. Packers at Lions. I still had hope for them coming into this week, but I think the Packers are done. Aaron Rodgers had three inter interceptions including two in the red zone and they just had a rough time on offense the entire day. The Lions made it 8-0 at halftime but Aaron Rodgers responded by finding Alan Lazard for a 20-yard touchdown making it 6-8 after a failed two-point conversion. Then Jared Goff in the fourth found James Mitchell for a three-yard touchdown making it a two-possession game. Mason Crosby's 25-yard field goal were the only points in the fourth quarter by either team putting the Packers down by six. Then on fourth and ten with 40 seconds remaining Aaron Rodgers pass fell incomplete to Sammy Watkins and the Packers dropped to 3-6. and six. Raiders at Jaguars. The Raiders jumped out to a 17-0 lead on two Devontae Adams touchdowns and a Daniel Carlson field goal, but that was the last time the Raiders scored a touchdown the entire day. Before halftime, Travis Etienne had a one-yard touchdown, making it a 10-point deficit. Carlson and Riley Patterson exchanged field goals, making it 20-10 at half. Then in the third quarter, Trevor Lawrence found Christian Kirk for a seven-yard touchdown, making it a field goal game. A Travis Etienne touchdown to open the fourth made it 24-20 Jacksonville. Then with a minute, eight seconds to go, Riley Patterson extended it to a 7-point lead, putting the ball in Derek Carr's hands for a final drive to tie it. On 4th and 17 after a Dwayne Smoot sack, the Raiders tried to lateral their way up the field, but they could not do it, and Jacksonville held on 27-20. to The Raiders are 2-6. and six. Colts at Patriots. We know rookie quarterbacks tend to do very poorly versus Bill Belichick's defense, and it was no different for Sam Ellinger. The Colts scored 0 touchdowns, and Ellinger was sacked 9 times. For the Patriots, it was pretty much the Nick Folk show as usual because they can't score touchdowns. The one time they did it was a reminder Andre Stevenson, three-yard receiving touchdown, making it 13-0. Chase McLaughlin made a 40-yard field goal in the third to make it a 10-point game, but that was the only time the Colts would score. With four minutes to go in the game, Sam Ellinger was picked off by Jonathan Jones, and a 17-yard touchdown return made it 26-3 Patriots. New England improves to 5-4. Bills at Jets. In the first quarter, Josh Allen had a one-yard rushing touchdown, making it 7-0, and everything seemed normal. But a Greg Zerline 53-yard field goal made it a four-point game at the end of one. In the mid-second, Josh Allen had a 30 36-yard rushing touchdown to put the Bills up by 11. Before halftime, Michael Carter had a 6-yard rushing touchdown to make it a 4-point game. And in the middle of the third, Zach Wilson found James Robinson for a 7-yard touchdown, giving the Jets a 3-point lead. Tyler Bass's 51-yard field goal in the fourth knotted the game up at 17, and a Greg Zerline 28-yard field goal gave the Jets a 3-point lead. But Josh Allen did get the ball back with a minute 43 seconds left, which was scary. On his final deep pass, it was incomplete to Gabe Davis covered by Sauce Gardner, and the Jets held on to 
to go 6-3. and three. Josh Allen also had two awful interceptions in this game, and he took full accountability for the loss. Vikings at Commanders. Kirk Cousins' first game back at FedEx Field since being the quarterback for Washington. Early on, Cousins found Justin Jefferson for a 9-yard touchdown, giving the Vikings a 7-0 lead. But after that, Washington scored 17 unanswered as Taylor Heineke found Curtis Samuel on a 49-yard catch, which was very weird because the ref got involved, and then Guy, who dates Zach Wilson's ex-girlfriend, Dax Milne, for a 6-yard touchdown. Washington was up 10 in the early 4th, and there were Heineke chants throughout the stadium, but Kirk Cousins was having none of it. A field goal made it a touchdown game, then Kirk Cousins found Dalvin Cook on a one-handed catch to make it a tie game at 17. Kirk Cousins put together a decent drive, and with 16 seconds to go, Greg Joseph made a 28-yard field goal to put the Vikings up 3. The Commanders blow a game they probably shouldn't have, and the Vikings have now won 6 straight games. Seahawks at Cardinals. Arizona took a 7-3 lead as DeAndre Hopkins took a drag route 22 yards. In the early second, Geno found DK Metcalf for a 4-yard touchdown, taking a 3-point lead. But in the early third, Geno was picked off by first-round pick Zayvon Collins on a 30-yard pick 6. Arizona took a 4-point lead, but that was the last time they would have the lead. Geno found Tyler Lockett for a 9-yard touchdown, then Kenneth Walker had a 1-yard touchdown, putting Seattle up by 10. With 3 minutes to go, Kyler found Zach Ertz to make it a touchdown game, but another touchdown drive by Seattle on a Kenneth Walker 5-yard touchdown made it 31-21. It was pretty much a game Arizona had to win to keep their division hopes alive, as they now drop to 3-6. and six. Rams at Buccaneers. There were no turnovers in this game, but each team only scored one touchdown. Matthew Stafford threw a strike to Cooper Cup for 69 yards, putting the Rams up 7-3 in the early second quarter. Then came a bunch of field goals. Ryan Suckup made a 38-yarder before halftime, making it 7-6. Former Buck, Matt Gay, made two field goals, giving the Rams a 13-6 lead. Ryan Suckup made a clutch 50-yard field goal, making it a four-point Rams lead. And of course, we've seen it before, Tom Brady with 44 seconds left got the ball back and led a game-winning touchdown drive. A 28-yard Kate Otten catch, a 14-yard Scotty Miller catch, and then a one-yard Kate Otten touchdown gave the Bucks a 16-13 lead with 13 seconds to go. The Buccaneers got a much-needed win going to 4-5, and five, and the Rams dropped to 3-5. and five. Titans at Chiefs. Ryan Tannehill couldn't go again, so was Malik Willis getting his second career start. The game went as you would expect early as the Chiefs went up 9-0. A Bucker field goal and a Nicole Hardman 7-yard touchdown put KC up by 9. But then two quick Derrick Henry touchdowns made it 14-9 Titans. In the early third, Randy Bullock made a 44-yard field goal, putting Tennessee up by 8. And right when you thought the Titans might pull this off, of course the Chiefs had a great drive and Patrick Mahomes took over the game. Mahomes had a 14-yard rushing touchdown and converted a 2-point conversion, tying the game up at 17. In overtime, the Chiefs won the toss, got in field goal range for Harrison Bucker, and he made a 28-yard field goal to make it 20-17. On the ensuing drive, Malik Willis was sacked back-to-back -back plays, and on 4th and 26, an incomplete pass to Robert Woods gave the Chiefs the win. They're now 6-2. Monday night, Ravens at Saints. In the first, Lamar Jackson found rookie tight end Isaiah Likely for a 24-yard touchdown, making it 7-0 Baltimore. Right before the two-minute warning, Kenyon Drake scored a goal line touchdown, making it 14-0 Ravens. At halftime, the Saints found themselves down 14-3. Kenyon Drake scored another goal line touchdown to make it 27-6. And then Jawan Johnson had a very weird touchdown where Marcus Peters thought he stepped out of bounds, but he actually just walked in for a 40-yard touchdown. The Ravens improved to 6-3.